by the grace of God, the first female vice president of the Republic of Ghana, Professor Nana Jane Opoku Ajima. Acknowledging the next president of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, the Speaker of Parliament, the Chairman of our beloved party, and Nananum Tu, and go on to recognize our lady, the sign language interpreter, and all of us who are here. And I want to acknowledge especially those who are outside. If they can hear me, I want them to know how much we appreciate them. They don't have the comfort of a seat, but they have kept faith. And that is NDC. We keep faith with our party. So I greet all of us who are here and those who are not able to join us. We often describe constitutions as living documents. And manifestos serve as blueprints for progressive policies and democratic development. While dynamic audiences such as these remind us all about the importance of people-centered projects. It is no coincidence, therefore, that we have met in Winneba, and this city has long been recognized as a center for development in education, culture, and vision. In Tebusia Fumumoho Nina Kwaba, Madawana say, the Wadawa Wadom NDC, I'm a party in my Dawa Mobia Poor Bakamu. Yes, Obi Ambra, eh, ye Jobia, ye yim. So we have heard the manifesto, and many of our speakers have come before me, and I want to recognize each of them. And the manifesto is the culmination of many town hall meetings, community engagements held across the country and led by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. And therefore, when we call it, the People's Manifesto, or that we are resetting Ghana, this is not a decision a few of us have made indoors. This is our collective responsibility and our collective strategy, having come to the collective realization that we need to move in another direction. So, I also want to recognize Professor Dansobuafo, the chair of all the efforts, I've never seen anyone so patient, so focused, so determined. Prof, thank you so much. We really, really appreciate all the work, all the sacrifices, all the tolerance that you have put in in order to bring us here today. And of course, all the members too. And again, to all those who made Association Loop and Abidjan close, their second and third homes, I want to say are you called to all of you. It has been a huge, a long walk, but we have arrived at the right destination. So we are not complaining. Actually, we are just happy. So, this launch today is the result of a visionary initiative commissioned by His Excellency Mahama some four years ago, and it has sustained us in the policy direction through its incubation right to its evolution and the launch today. With foresight, His Excellency asked 
for the beginning of crafting of what might someday become a manifesto. And even if it didn't, it would have been the collection of thoughts, the collection of strategies that we might hand over to another group. And since it's all within the party, it, there was no problem. So, over the past four years, we have engaged in countless discussions, debates, we have come to agreements and compromises, and refined many drafts and revisions to bring this document to life. We came from the party, but also from stakeholder organizations, civil society, many other concerned groups, anyone who wished to be part of the drive to change things for the better. Therefore, we have included input from private citizens because that is also very important. As a party, we have a proud tradition of listening to diverse perspectives. As is often said here in the central region, those standing behind us have the clearest view of whether the path we are laying is straight or not. This philosophy has resulted in what is being launched today, which is truly a collective document shaped by contributions from Ghanaians from all walks of life, regardless. So what we are proposing, in collaboration with Ghanaians at home and across the globe, is what it is that has been elaborately conveyed by His Excellency and a couple of persons. I wish to begin with education. The NDC remains unwavering in its commitment to quality and accessible education for all Ghanaian children, from kindergarten through senior high school to the university and beyond. Education is a bedrock of national development, and we are determined to ensure that every child, no matter their background, has access to a conducive learning environment. To achieve this, we will prioritize personnel quality, provision of infrastructure and learning material, and especially the relevance of what the learners are acquiring towards our future development. And we will pay particular attention to our schools in the rural areas and in deprived areas. Having said that, what I'm trying to say is that the education goes beyond the infrastructure. Although that is basic, it is fundamental. It ought to have been there, but it has not been. And that is why we pay attention to it. And we also pay attention to the quality of the facilitators of the whole learning process. And that explains why we keep raising the quality of teacher preparation and teacher training. Vocational and technical education is a very important area of focus. With approximately 70% of our population under the age of 30 and 50% under the age of 18, it is imperative that we prepare our youth for the job market. And I would like to plead here that we look at our semantics again. If somebody went to the vocational school, it is because he is so endowed to go there. It is not so much because he couldn't. We need to tone that language so that the students will feel appreciated and will feel encouraged and will know that we appreciate them also for the talent that God has given them. We know without them, all the value addition and so on may elude us. The, our manifesto also emphasizes digital literacy, and I think my boss has spoken um, at length on that. But our vision is very clear. We want and, and will support an education system that prepares every Ghanaian child for a bright future and a child who is rooted in their global knowledge 
through our rich cultural legacy. We consider this to be very, very important. And therefore, all the things that have been spoken about in education support this philosophical underpinning. Now, let me highlight our women. We recognize the role of women, and Shamima, thanks for emphasizing all of it. It's very, very important, and we agree with you. But distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you also know in this country where we stand as women. In fact, before I go on, um, where are the women here? If you don't mind, I would like all the women to stand just for a moment. Actually, we've been sitting for too long, so it's okay. And I want all of you to clap in appreciation. I want you all to clap in appreciation for what the NDC and for His Excellency John Dramani Mahama has done for us. By bringing one of us into the public light, he has brought all of us. Thank you very much. You may sit down. So, H. E., we want to thank you very, very much. And you know, as women, we have all kinds of peculiar problems that only we know, that only we experience. He already talked about how our bodies naturally function and how that can even stop us from moving forward. It is not by accident that when you look at enrollment from P1 to P3, it's, it's almost stable. But you look at P3 to P6, the drop comes after P6, and you ask yourself, why is this happening? And now we know why. And so we, we made a bold step to ensure that girls can also go to school, stay in school, move up as high as they can, and realize the potential in them. And of course, our bodies didn't just start functioning that way. It's just been who we are. We also know our economic challenges more than others. And what are some of them? For all kinds of reasons, we are not able to stay in school, and that is something we are going to work on aggressively, to remove all the bottlenecks, to remove all the obstacles that prevent girls from moving up. But meanwhile, a lot of us are up there already, and we may have missed a few things. So what happens? It is not by accident again that in this country, many, many women are in the small-scale businesses. As in a so what's the solution to all of this? Or we'll go and borrow. Which bank? The bank will say, bring a collateral. What is it? The papers to your car. Na car na ye wobia. Tro tro ne fompo wa ya sam. And then stood up for what done the papers, bra. What am I taking bus in fee? I don't know one could take a fa a bus in the crat, eh? Na ezo ko da ezo kaje bus in. In so chada bank na yenta ya ukoho. In su ye hiyambwa. So then what do we do? We go to somebody who will lend us money. Yes, he will, lend, he will lend us the money, but the interest on that money is not even what we are seeing as 40% from the banks. Sometimes 100 or more. Say, you're in here, political party are all boom, Miss Yafo. Now, party on your morning on your National Democratic Congress. Then your president is all boom, Miss Yafo. Otsi Miss Yafo wants to be crying your one on his excellency John Dramani Mahama. No, I can't hear you now. You're in your boom. No, I can't see you. I'm done.
In say, I pay a talk or yam papa, a talk or poor one, why you fool, and I'm a boy. What about the other? I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it